is another word of God through Jesus Christ, street and outreach ministry, raw and uncut productions. Uh, perfect time for the word. God bless you. We're getting ready to get into a powerful word. I'm getting ready to do some study. Y'all want to study with me? Come on and let's, uh, let's see. You're watching the word of God through Jesus Christ Street and Ivory Telecast. And I'm very grateful that you're here. Okay. Um, you can reach the ministry by calling 475 three zero zero three eight five zero and thank you so much for being a part of this broadcast and watch this don't get caught up in the theatrics but get caught up in the word god bless you my name is apostle alan e coleman jr the lord has assigned me as apostle teacher and prophet of the word of God through Jesus Christ street and outreach ministry thank you for joining the ministry for this broadcast that God is doing today I don't know what he's gonna do I don't even know if he's gonna have friends with me or not I don't know but we're gonna find out you can reach the ministry at 475 24 hours the ministry's website is also on the screen, so that way you'll know how to join us on the web. Not only that, but periodically there will be the Cash App link on the screen so you can share love offerings to partner with us as God uses us to help others in street and outreach ministry. There's always ongoing fundraisers because God uses the ministry to help others just like he did when he walked this earth. God bless you, and let's get in here and find out what it is the Lord want to say unto us. Come on. And now, to the Word of God, through Jesus Christ, with Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr. God bless you, and enjoy the message. Previously on the Word of God, through Jesus Christ, telecast. Now, this right here is going to be the passage that's going to contain our meat, our pork chop meatloaf, our beef, Daniel chapter 10, 
and we're going to read four verses, four simple verses. And the Holy Ghost is saying that many have read these verses before and didn't get clarity because of the content. But there's many that have read it and the Lord revealed to them what it meant because they deal in that field of ministry. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day the thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God. Thy words were heard. And I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help. And now will I return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I am gone forth, lo, the prince of Grecia shall come. But I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. And there is none that holdeth with me in these things, but Michael, your prince. And actually, in the Greek, I mean the Hebrew, the word there is strengtheneth himself. There is none that strengtheneth himself with me in these things, but Michael. Years ago, the Lord used me to teach in a series or teach on a subject on television back in the late 90s, early 2000s. But he told me to bring it back because you can't re-sermon a sermon. Like there's some people that might have sermons written 10 years ago and they go grab it and say, let me redo this and then they redo it. But you can't do that. Because if you've been walking with God, then within the time of 10 years ago to now, you had to have grown. So there would be amendments made. There would be additional notes added because you've learned more. Hey! And that's where we are right now. So the subject the Lord used me to teach on back then in a couple of different episodes, I think it got up to I don't know, part something. I don't know. But I know the Lord told me, all right, he brought the subject back up last night to me. And he said, let's make this a series. I said, okay, Lord. And the title of the series is called Trials, Comma, Tribulations, and Temptations. The series. That's the name of it. That's the thought he gave me. His thought. Trials tribulations, and temptations, the series. The title of this talk is Trials. Da, da, da. Part. Now, let's tune into our broadcast and see what the God of heaven has to say unto us. Tribulations and temptations, but tonight we're going to dissect and examine trials. Let's say our grace. Father, in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, we come before you again asking you to forgive us for every last one of our sins from the time we were born up to now so that that way our whole record is covered. That way the whole slate should be clean. Wash it with the blood of the Lamb. And bless us to stand before you like young chicks waiting for the mother bird to come and feed us. We stand with our heads up, our mouths open in awe when we think of what you've done for us. 
and we are waiting for you to impart more unto us that we should grow, that we should be able to go to the next level, that we should be able to get ministered to where we are right now, that we should be able to receive your strategy to be able to bring us to the next level. Many reasons that your people are coming to you right now. And some people do think it's strange what they're going through, but it's not strange. Because a trial is a trial. Is a trial. Is a trial. There's different types, but a trial is a trial. Please minister to us where we are. And before we say let it be done, which is what amen means, before us prophets say so let it be written, so let it be done, which is what amen means. Before us apostles say, let it be established as has been said or threatened, which is what amen means. Strengthen us to do this. Satan, we bind you. According to Matthew 18 and 18, we bind you by the power of the Holy Ghost. And we render you powerless, not only over us, but over the people we're praying for, the things we're praying for, and everything concerning us. Oh, we plead the blood of Jesus against you as a shield of protection. And we loose all of our stuff from your grip. The people we're praying for, we loose them from your grip. The things we're praying for, we loose them from your grip. The places we're praying for, we loose them from your grip. The subjects we're praying about, we loose the answers from your grip. And we plead the blood over the people we're praying for, over the things we're praying for, over the places we're praying for, over ourselves, and over the answers to the questions we've asked God. We plead the blood over those things as a covering so you can't touch it, and the shield of protection being the blood of the Lamb against you so that you can't come at us. And we command you to go back to the pit of hell from where you came because that is your jurisdiction now after binding the strong man like it says in Matthew 12 now we rob his house so every demon and there's so many to name every demon that works for Satan it doesn't matter what your name is. It doesn't matter what your rank is. It doesn't matter what your function is. We can't get tied up in that right now because there's too many demons that are attacking too many things. And everything we just pled the blood over, we loose those from those demons' grip. And we command all you demons to be cast out. We kick you out. We cast you out of our life and out of our affairs. We cast you out of the lives of the people we're praying for. We cast you out of the situations that we're praying for. We cast you out of the answers that we're waiting for from God. And we cast you out of the places that we're praying about. We cast you out. We command you to go back to the pit of hell from where you came. And we loose all of that stuff from your grip too. And we plead the blood over it as a covering again. 
the yoke of bondage, of sickness, of procrastination, of hurt, of fear, of pain, of messed up marriages, of wayward children, of people's health problems. The yoke is destroyed because of the anointing from God. And Father, we thank you for hearing that. Now, it also says, you wrote in Matthew 12, that the unclean spirit, when he is going out of a man, travels over dry ground looking for rest. And when he can't find none, then he says, I'll go back to where I came from. And he goes back to the life or to the house that he left. And he see it garnished and swept and clean. And then go get seven other demons worse than himself and come back. And then the state of that man is far worse than it was before. So we're going to stop that right now. We ask in Jesus' name, Father, that you dispense holy and heavenly angels to come into the earth realm. Uh, and legions come into the earth realm, legions of angels, legions of elect angels to come into the earth realm, to go where they are needed, to go in the lives of the people we're praying for, to go into the situations that we're praying about, to go and bring us the answers that we are asking you questions about, the answers that we are waiting for. Please send angels to bring them. Those that are sick that we're praying for, dispense angels to go where they are to work on them and to bring restoration in their wings. Oh, glory to God. Oh, Lord. Oh. Oh, yes. Satamboro so ki iya. E shakanda bo si tata seda. Iya na bo shakanda na bo si te. E andara so koyo bo si te. In Jesus' name. We ask that you dispense them. Send some here too. Because I need some answers. There's people that you got me praying for. And we need, during the trial, we need encouragement. In Jesus' name, we seal this prayer. In Jesus' name, we seal this prayer. And we cover this prayer in the blood of the Lamb. In Jesus' name, Father, we thank you for being our God. We thank you for giving us the victory. We thank you for answering us. Right now, we're thanking you. And for some of us, we're saying, after you do it, we'll thank you then. Some people don't understand that, Lord, because some people want to thank you now. And, and they're not wrong for that. That's what you said, praise the Lord. But there's some of us that know what the scriptures say and where Jacob said in Genesis 28, if you do this, that, this, and that, then you'll be my God. <laughs> you was already his God. But he knew how to bargain with you. And for those of us that bargain with you, that's what we're doing right now. We'll thank you when you do it. The praise is ready. We're going to hold it until you do it. Until it manifests in the natural. In Jesus' name, so let it be written. So let it be done. In Jesus' name, let it be said or done as has been threatened or promised. In Jesus' name, we say, let it be established. In Jesus' name, we say, amen. Amen. And amen. Trials. They're defined as hardships that try our faith. Let's, let's go to 1 Peter again, chapter 4. And let's chew on 
verse 12. Let's chew on that. Brother Peter was led by the Holy Ghost to write, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though something as though some strange thing happened unto you. Think it not strange. I just have to check something out because we don't need error. Not at all. Very important. Let me write this down. Because this is when 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 you're in the when you're dissecting scripture, you can't put your spin on anything. You have to go as the Lord lead and I've been taught by the Holy Ghost 27 years ago he placed me in this office of apostle to go into the original language of scripture. A lot of people get stuck in the English, and sometimes that can make good preaching. But when you're teaching and explaining the word, which is what we need a lot of, Jesus did a lot of teaching. People had already had a lot of preaching being done, but he did a lot of teaching. Because people need the word explained to them so if they understand what scripture is saying, then they can get the benefit of the demonstration of what the scripture promises. Think it not strange. Concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. As though some strange thing happened unto you. Think it not strange. What I had to look up right quick, my question was in the Greek, was this word strange? The same word in both instances. Now, if we stay in the English, it will be. And that's where our spin comes on. But when we go into the original language, then it changes. Because we're able then to get the truth of the word. Now, that first word strange is called zenizo. That's a Greek word, zenizo. And it means to be a host or passively a guest. By implication, it means to be strange or to make strange or appear strange. 
This word signifies to receive as a guest, <laughs> meaning this tribe. Think it not strange. Think it not strange. Don't let it appear to be strange that you're going through a trial. Don't look at it like, why me? Mm -mm. The Lord was showing me something down in verse 16 of 1 Peter 4. Yet if any man suffers as a Christian, now, there's a lot of deep ministers who say, well, in Scripture, the word Christian was really an insult. Then there's some that have done two minutes of studying that say, well, in the book of Acts where it says that they were first called Christians in Antioch, the believers were, that it was said in a derogatory way, oh, those are Christians. <laughs> yeah, yeah, on one side of the coin, that... That, that happened. They were labeled as Christians, and it came, it was used as a derogatory term from derogatory people. Who were those people? They were unbelievers. The unbelievers looked at those that followed Christ and said, they're Christians. Yeah, they're Christians. But the Lord has allowed that label to be stamped on us because we follow Christ. Me and my, one of my daughters, my, one of my younger daughters, Prophetess Ali, we was have a Bible study the other day, and the Lord led me to share with her that the, uh, Brother Paul wrote to the city of Ephesus, and that the people living there were Ephesians. He wrote to the city of Corinth, and the brethren that were living there were Corinthians. He wrote to the city of Philippi, and the brethren living there were Philippians. So in the same sense, the Lord is leading me to share, that we are in Christ <laughs> so we are positively when we're saved for real when we follow him for real when we have a relationship with him for real we are Christians scripture says right here if any man suffer as a Christian let him not be ashamed there's a lot of people that cannot get to the next level because they don't want to suffer as a Christian. You have many other beliefs that have hidden under the banner of Christianity which are not Christians. Catholicism is not Christianity. Seventh-day Adventism is not Christianity. Not at all. Why? Because in seven-day Adventism, they go by the law. They try to tell you, keep the Sabbath, and that's how you get to heaven, which is a lie. And in Catholicism, they tell you to worship Mary, who brings you to Christ, who brings you to God, and that's a lie. Because there is no mediatrix in heaven. There is one mediator the man Jesus Christ, but there is no media tricks, which is Mary, or what they call the doctrine of Marianism. Mm -mm. So some people have taken that and stamped themselves with it to appear to be official. But that doesn't make them official. Because if you suffer as a Christian, then you walk like Christ. You have the mind of Christ. You want to do things like Christ. Even though you know you cannot be on the level of Christ because Christ is God manifest in the flesh, but we want to try to emulate him the best we can. 
allowing our new nature, which is our spiritual nature, to subdue our human nature, which is our natural nature. So then we being a living soul, not a spirit, because some people say we are spirits. No, we're not. Spirit is breath. You're not breath. You are a living soul, which holds your emotions, your intellect, your will, your traits that consider you having personhood. So our soul is who we are and we are encased in flesh which is the skin and we have a spirit which is the breath of God and inwardly it is a room in which the Holy Ghost wants to live in in which he imparts spiritual gifts and that is important to know so when he is leading you you will suffer as a Christian why? Because you live as a Christian. Even when you pray about something, you will go through a, a whole lot of attacks and backlash as a repercussion of your prayer. Why? Because you are praying as a Christian with the rights of a Christian. <laughs> yes, Lord. Thank you. Not strange. Think it, not strange. Think it, not Zenezzo. To be a host. To be a host. Or to, re to, be, to receive as a guest. Think it, not strange or think it not Zenizzo, or think it, don't be surprised that your life hosts things that appear in your life. What things? Fiery trials. Think it not Zenizzo, Concerning the fiery trials, let's, let's talk about that for a minute. Fiery here is from the Greek word purosis, which means ignition. It's used three times in the New Testament. It means ignition. Uh, in other words, specifically smelting, something which was smelting is blending and welding. Figuratively, this word means conflagration, which means bonfire, blaze, or flaming. And it also figuratively means calamity, which calamity means adversity. These are synonyms. Adversity and catastrophe as a test. So a fiery trial, again, the Greek word is purosis, and it's figuratively, that's the context of this particular uh, text. It's, it's meaning a conflagration or a calamity as a test. Fiery. Trial. Metaphorically, it's a metaphor in 1 Peter 4 and 12. A fiery trial. This is, these two words go together. <laughs> Purosis means fiery trial. Not just trial, not just some scrimmage, not just some practice or rehearsal, but a fiery trial. A trial that is burning, that is a catastrophe, that is adversity. Mm. Whatever you're praying for, that's where the fight is. The fight is there. Notice this, brethren. Whatever you're praying for, opposition comes right there. 
And you have to keep on pressing. Keep on praying. Keep on fighting. Because this is a test. It's a hardship. A fiery trial. Which is to try you. Here we go again with a word, try, which is accompanied in the Greek by the word to, which is to try. That's one, one, one definition, one Greek word, pros, pros. Some say pros, some say pros. <laughs> Very few say pros, but that's not how it's said in the Greek. Pros. And it is a strengthened form of the Greek word proyarimi, which means to bring forth. So pros is a preposition of direction. That's where the two comes in at. To try, meaning forward, toward, to come to, to bring forth. Proyerami, proyerami, that's how you pronounce it, proyerami. I'm saying it in syllables so you can catch it and learn how to pronounce it. Proyerami is to bring forth. So pros is from that, to try. It's from proyerami. So to try means, it's a strengthened form of that word, and it means to come toward you. It's brought to you, to try you. Mm -hmm. Because try is from the Greek word perasmos, and it means a putting to proof. So to, to try is pros again, and try by itself means perasmos. That's the Greek word, and it means a putting to proof. So think it not purosis. Well, actually, think it not zenizo concerning the purosis, the fiery trials, that are, which is pros, parasmos, to try you. That's what the trial is for. It's important to understand that. Because the devil will make you think that the trial you're in is the story. When it's not, it's a test. Okay, so how do we know how it's going to come out? That's where prayer comes in. That's where consulting God comes in. Because when the Lord gives you the vision, <laughs> when he shows you the picture, when he shows you what he declares, that's how it's going to come out. Now, from how he showed you to the time it happened, it's going to get a little rough in between. And if you allow that to, 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 to commentate the story for you, then it's going to throw you. Your emotions cannot be a part of your fight because we live by faith and not by sight. Because when you look at something, it's seen one way. It's seen one way, but the faith report is always different. When God tells you something and you believe it, to believe what God says is called faith. To believe what God says, I'm not speaking Chinese. Some of you are probably there. I'm going, how is it? Today? But I'm not. Chewing gum. 
But to hear what God says, and I wasn't speaking against the Chinese, what I was saying, which I'm not scared, I'm not taking back what I just said. It was a co comedic thing because if you watch the Chinese Kung Fu pictures with the subtitles, you'll see the mouth moving and the words say different. That's written. So, yeah, I, I, I wanted you to know I wasn't doing that. But God said to say that to break the ice. So we don't get real, 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 real deep. I don't want to throw you. We, we, you know, let's stay right here, though. When God tell you what he's going to do. And see, this is rough. Because, watch this. The stronger your faith, the harder the trial. So, it's not odd that the scripture should say, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial. The trial that's on fire, that's full of blaze, that's full of pain and anguish. The trial that seemed like it'll never end. Once you get out of the trial and you look back, you're going to say, wow, it wasn't long at all. While I was in it, it seemed like it lasted a long time. But when you look back, you see two things. One, three things. Thank you, Lord. One, you see it didn't last as long as it seemed like it did. Two, you see God was standing there all the time. And three, you see the devil was standing there mad and throwing a fit because you didn't break. Because you didn't give up. The devil will try to paint a picture that will show you on your own you can't make it. And see, that right there, the trial shows a person's heart. Because if you feel like you can make it on your own, your trial will show you that you can't. But when you know that the Lord is your God. The Lord is your help. I will look to the hills from whence cometh my help. When you know that your help comes from heaven, that you have all of heaven fighting for you, then you can look at the trial and go, yeah, that's right. I can't do nothing. And that'll keep you in prayer. The Lord led me to say to somebody recently, in order for you to be able to go into being a prayer warrior, you have to live a prayer for life. You can't come to God because now there's a crisis and a trial and you're going to come to God with all kinds of stipulations and try to tell him, well, your word says, but then before the trial, you was living foul. You was living wrong. You was doing what you want to do. You can't come to God like that. And that is not a good person to walk in a trial with. Why? Because if you've been living right, and God, the favor of God is on you, and you know God, and you have a relationship with him, your prayer is able to reach a level that those that are carnal cannot reach. Oh, glory. Mm -mm. They can't reach that level. Sometimes you have to separate from folk when you're in a trial. Even if all of y'all are in the trial together because everyone is affected by a trial. When everyone is connected to a trial, they are all affected by the trial in different ways. But if you've been living to please God before the trial, when you go through the trial, there is a certain anointing that is on you because you was living according to the promise before the trial. Suffering as a Christian. Well, I go to church. Well, you messed up right there. How? Well, because the church is not a building. If you think that when you went in that building, that's where you found God, you got a problem. And a lot of people, watch this. I'm about to get deep as God leaves me. A lot of people are basing their Christian walk on the fact that they go to a building. 
So that was where when the devil shut them buildings down, a lot of y'all felt lost. Why? Because you had no relationship with God outside of the building. Your God was in the building. Let's look at that for a minute. When you go in the building, what do you see? Cover your toes. You see backbiting. You see gossipers. You see entertainers, performers. You see Chase and Filthy Lucre. Everything is a fundraiser. You see families, the whole family in the pool pit. You see respected persons. A person been there 20 years, all of a sudden they become the grand poobah. <laughs> God's telling me to say all this. I ain't taking it back. I, I'm saying what he's telling me to say. When you go inside the buildings, this is what you see. I'm not going to mention homosexuality in the choir and the choir director and in the pulpit and creeping about amongst the, the pews looking for prey, P-R-E-Y. You see a lot of stuff, number players, number runners, gamblers, smokers, crackheads, dope fiends. All of this when you go in the building. Wait a minute, hold that thought. Because some people that are in those situations go there for deliverance. The bad part is when they go there for it, they don't get it because the people there that are in the same situation aren't delivered. So God is not there. So when the devil used the ungodly government to shut down the place of worship that you call the place of worship during the time that this demon named coronavirus has been and still is walking around some of you were lost watch this then the hirelings they also had a fit because the rent still had to be paid the pastor's car still had to be paid for the pastor's house or the evangelist's house or the prophet house or the prophetess house had to be paid for. All right. Even the women who are really prophetesses who try to play apostle, their house had to be paid for. Their car had to be paid for. Their hair and nails had to be did. So now they're missing that income. And so what did they do? Before that happened, people had already started recording on their cell phone in the place of worship. So there could be a place of worship with three people with one person sitting there recording and the person that's in the pulpit entertaining and auditioning so hard for an acting role that you would think that that place was on fire. Why? Because they've done what they've seen people do. They say what they heard people say and it was all a bum steer. The Lord was not there. So then when this demon inspired people, to sh the, the government, to shut down the buildings that y'all security was in, here's what happened. Again, the leader said, we need the revenue. They have meetings that y'all didn't know about. Oh, I know some of y'all said, I was at the meeting. Yeah, you was at that meeting, but you wasn't at the other one. The other meeting was, we got to get this money. Well, how are we going to do it? Well, yes, go ahead, brother. I, uh, you know, they doing virtual, you know, internet. People are doing it on the internet now. They, oh, they are? Yeah, on Facebook. Well, I don't know how to do that. I know how to do it, Pastor. I'll help you. And they're from the pulpit. Praise the Lord. God is with you. Okay, you go ahead and do that, and we, we're going to get this revenue. Then comes the mess that was in the building that wasn't saving nobody. They started putting it on Facebook and YouTube, and it wasn't saving nobody. <laughs> Watch this. There was already people on Facebook who were not called at all and who were going to services on Sunday and coming home and re-preaching what the preacher preached. So it was already hirelings and connivers 
and crooks and thieves and liars. Oh my goodness, y'all saw the African ones? How they trying to preach our heart and tell you what Jesus is saying? In Africa, they don't even use the name Jesus. Not in their real language. But listen, the devil is so busy. So busy. There's some Africans that have become Christians and that have accepted Jesus Christ. But there's a lot that have it. There's a lot in poor countries that are preying on Americans. Why? Because America is a very prosperous country. This country was set up by God. I know there's people who call themselves black Israelites who were born in the ghetto, but yet and still claim they traced their family line all the way back to Israel. You're lying. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. We know that people in Israel and in that part of the country, yes, they were of color. We, we're aware of all of that. Some of us that study, we know that. But race or color has nothing to do with anything. It's about the bloodline. Are you connected to Jesus Christ? Think it not. Zenizu. Concerning. The purosis. That has been sent. Prize you. To try. As though. Some. Strange thing. Happened to you. And that word strange. Is from the Greek word. You know Zenizo was the first strange. But the second word strange. Is Xenos. And this word, this word, Xenos, means alien. Literally, that's what it means. Alien, figuratively, it means novel. By implication, it means a guest or vice versa, entertainer. It means a host. Xenos means one who receives and entertains another hospitably. The one with whom he stays or lodges. The tribe. You're the one the trial lodges with. So let's put that in context. Think it not Zenitza. Okay. Think it not. Think it not. Uh, this guest that has come into our life in the form of a trial, the different kinds of guests that's included in the trial, fear, panic, being upset, crying, being emotional, the pressure. Those are hosts. Those are guests. Think it not Zenizo that those things should come to your life as though it is Zenos. A strange thing. Because it's not. Because this goes with being a Christian. That word trial is also used in two terms. I'll tell you why. Because trial being a test, uh, the word piasmos, pirasmos, where it says to try you, is also is used of trials with beneficial purpose and effect. It also means temptations. So in James chapter 1 verse 2 where it says count it all joy brethren when you fall into diverse temptations that word is pirasmos or 
perasmos, which is used of trials with beneficial purposes and effect. It also means temptations, which are divinely permitted or divinely sent. I tell you, that's, that was a powerful show. That was really, really, really a powerful show. Join us the next time when the Lord leads us to go back in the scripture with some more information. Maybe it'll be with one of my friends. Maybe it'll be just me. I don't know. Either way, the Lord will be orchestrating the lesson. God bless you. And take care <laughs> till the next time. In Jesus' name. Lord, I just thank you for all that I have in you. And all that you are in my life. For all that you've done for thy servant. Lord, you're just so wonderful. You're just so wonderful. I can't think of how else my life would be without you. As long as I have Jesus. I have a satisfied mind. This is my prayer. Sometimes I don't have food on my table.